In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, when God brought creation into being, God spoke it. He had this idea of world and worlds and people and life and love and a universe. And he wanted to get this idea out there. And so out of God's unlimited imagination and through his sovereign power, he spoke everything that is in the universe into being. For us, to you, To provide a home for us so that we might know who he is. And as an expression of his hospitable, loving, and eloquent heart, God spoke. God speaks. We as Christians are people of the Word. God speaks to us. First and foremost, through the Bible, God speaks to us. Poetry and narrative and wisdom literature and history. All kinds of grammatical forms, ancient Hebrew forms and Greek forms, now translated into English forms and words. And we, the people made by God, are made in the image of this speaking God. You are made to express yourself to others and to be heard and to hear others in return. You are made to create and communicate and relate and together with one another, all of us flourish and fill the world. As the ultimate being in community, God gave us language I think first and foremost, so that we could be in community with each other and with him. Frederick Buechner writes or surmises that the ultimate purpose of language, I suspect, is that humanity may speak to God. And so, God gave us nouns so that we could name things. And through nouns, see this, symbolically see this other thing. God gave us verbs to move nouns along and things along and grammatical forms to create boundaries that when we stick in it, it's a good thing. And when we go outside of it and write poetry, it's a great thing. He gave us all of these grammatical tools and rules so that you, we, could say, I love you, or I have a dream, or I am the way. Writer Marilyn Chandler McIntyre gave some talks at Princeton in the Stone Lectures, turned them into a book, and in the first chapter of her book, she talks about language and community and how they fit together. She said, in early English usage, the word conversation appears to have been a term that included and implied much more than it does now. To converse was to foster community, to commune with, to dwell in a place with others. Conversation was understood to be a life-sustaining practice, a blessing and a craft to be cultivated for the common good. One of several L.A. teachers that I spoke to over the past week said, among a whole bunch of other things, L.A. teachers give you long, well-thought-out answers to things. She said, grammar provides a structure or guideline for communicating exactly what we want to communicate. When it's done right, there's a precision that comes through grammar. Another junior high LA teacher said, words identify, encapsulate, and quantify to some degree our motives, heart's desire, emotional, and intellectual cognition. 
And then in brackets afterwards, he goes, oh, sorry, that was a terrible sentence. <laughs> Such an L.A. teacher. So God's gift of language gives us a means through which we can communicate and relate to one another in a clear, creative, sometimes very complex, so that we can build bridges and sometimes very compelling and beautiful ways. Our language, English, has well over one million words. So we can do a lot of communicating and relating and world building with that gift. We can be very precise, come up with new words for new meanings, for new things that we're discovering all the time, and build this English language that we share. I mean, look at what humanity has been able to build as a result of what language has allowed us to communicate about. And still, though, it's not quite right, this world. And it falls short and evidences a brokenness way, way too often. And I think, thinking about language this week, this has a lot to do with miscommunication. I love how when Senator Kerry last week blew it by throwing off an offhand remark about if they just give up all their chemical weapons, by mistake, he ended up, at least for a while, averting what could have been another war, a war upon a war. We, we don't use words rightly most of the time, in the right way, to the right end. We, we don't listen well. We don't understand what people are trying to say. We can't truly know often what they really mean. The gift of language is broken. From Genesis chapter 11, at one time, the whole earth spoke the same language. It so happened that as they moved out of the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled down. And they said to one another, Come, let's make bricks and fire them well. And they used brick for stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let's build, a, build ourselves a city and a, and a tower that reaches to heaven. Let's make ourselves famous so we won't be scattered here and across the earth. Like all of us, they had this propensity to want to be God themselves and be number one. But God came down and looked over the city and the tower those people had built. And God took one look and said, One people, one language? Why, this is only the first step. No telling what they'll come up with next. They'll stop at nothing. Come, we'll go down and garble their speech so they won't understand each other. And then God scattered them from there all over the world, and they had to quit building the city. That's how it came to be called Babel, because there God turned their language into Babel. From there God scattered them all over the world. God's gift of language, meant for perfect communion, is broken. I'll pause for a second, and you can think about how you blew it just this week with your words. Our hearing, our speaking, our writing falls short. So many words that we use, and so, much word, so many words in our language are dead words and lifeless. And so many are devoid of their meaning or the fullness of their meaning. Wires get crossed when I say something to somebody and they don't fully understand what I meant. I, I can't find the right word at times to express this truth or this idea. We misinterpret. Words are used to manipulate and, and to lie. And as a result, relationships suffer. We end up further and further apart instead of closer and closer together. Further from each other and further from God. 
Chandler McIntyre again, like any other life-sustaining resource, language can be depleted, polluted, contaminated, eroded, and filled with artificial stimulants. And because we hear so many words constantly, our capacity, and especially now, our capacity to savor words, to ponder over them, to reflect upon them, to hear the echoes of ancient cadences, and attune ourselves to elusiveness and alliteration are eroding. So God gave and created this amazing gift of language. It fell and falls short and is now in desperate need, our grammar of correction. Our imaginations need to be rekindled again and our syntax sorted out. The nef- emphasis on sin tax. Our language needs to be cleaned up. Really regretting I tried that pathetic joke there. (laughs) Our language needs to be cleaned up because we're meant to hear words that are true and you are meant to speak words that are empowered and true in order for this world to flourish. And there is in all of us a hunger for words that truly satisfy. 